Hello and good evening. Today uh, I'm going to be telling you about verifiable computation and specifically our approach to it with our OCaml DSL for writing verifiable computations. So you might be wondering, what is a verifiable computation anyway? Well, I'll tell you. It's two things. It's a computation and a proof. So that is verifiable. It's probably helpful to go over a few examples of what exactly uh, we might do with verifiable computation. So as a first example, uh, imagine an election where the government is going to compute the winner and prove that the votes were all counted correctly. As another example, you can imagine computing a news story with a quote like, I love pizza, who doesn't, along with a proof that the, the quote came from a reliable source while keeping the identity of the source a secret. As a final example, you can imagine uh, an advertising service computing an advertisement, like, you know, saying buy pizza, along with a proof that the advertisement was generated blindly without access to your personal information. At this point, I, I can imagine that you're wondering, how is this magical thing possible? Well, it turns out the way that it's possible is a wonderful cryptographic technology called ZK SNARKs. So that we can understand how ZK SNARKs work, what exactly they buy us, um, we're going to have a little bit of background. The first concept that I want to introduce you to is that of a constraint system. What's a constraint system? Well, it's basically just going to be a list of constraints where each constraint is of the form some polynomial is equal to some constant. So you can imagine uh, that we have this constraint system, you know, where this is some polynomial, it's equal to zero, this is some other polynomial, it's equal to 50. Uh, so that's a constraint system. And then a sort of partner concept to a constraint system is that of a satisfying assignment to a constraint system. So what is a satisfying assignment? Well, it's just an assignment of values to each of the variables that appear in the system um, so that each constraint in the system is satisfied. In other words, the equation is true if you plug in those values for the variables. Okay, so now there's a wonderful fact about constraint systems like this one. Um, and that fact is they're sort of universal. In what sense are they universal? Well, any property that you might have in mind can be translated into a constraint system so that if you want to prove I know some data so that that property holds, that would be the same as proving I know an assignment so that the constraint system with that assignment is satisfied. Okay, so that's the sense in which they're universal. Any property can be translated into a constraint system. So that satisfiability of that constraint system is the same thing as uh, there being some data uh, which makes the property true. Okay, so now that we have that background, uh, we're equipped to understand what it is that ZK SNARKs actually do for us. And what it is that they do is ZK SNARKs let you prove statements of the form, I know a satisfying assignment to the, some constraint system, uh, so that those proofs have a few properties. The first is that those proofs are zero knowledge. In other words, they keep the assignment itself hidden. The second is that those proofs are succinct. And what that means is uh, they're very small, like a few hundred bytes, less than a kilobyte, and the proofs take only milliseconds to check. Now, to see how SNARKs might help us with verifiable computation, let's go back to an example. Um, the example that I want to consider is that of a sort of a verifiable election. Okay, so imagine you and your friends, you get together, and it's pizza time. It's time to eat some pizza. But there's an important question. What kind of pizza are we going to get? Some of us like mushroom. Others of us might like pepperoni, which looks like this. So we have to vote on what kind of pizza we're going to get. And moreover, because this is a very sensitive election, we, everyone wants to keep their votes as secret as possible. But, you know, there's maybe one person that everyone trusts to know their votes and who won't uh, give the, those votes away, and we'll call that person Alice. And Alice is going to act as the government for this election. She's going to collect all the votes, she's going to tally them, and then she's somehow going to produce a proof for everyone that she actually ran the, the election correctly. She counted the votes correctly. Let's go into detail on what exactly our election scheme could look like. So, First, we're going to have each voter, each future pizza consumer, choose their vote, be it mushroom or pepperoni, and send that vote to Alice, the government. Next, they're going to publish a commitment to their vote. So the commitment uh, here in green will be public. The vote will be secret. OK, so what that commitment does is basically commits the person to the vote in the sense that the person won't be able to change their vote uh, while keeping the commitment the same. So it's a way of sort of committing publicly to some value, in this case, a vote. So that's what each voter does. Step two, Alice, the government, she's going to compute the winner of the election, W, also public in green. And she's going to prove the following statement. She's going to prove, using snarks, 
I know some secret votes corresponding to the public commitments so that W is in fact the majority of all those votes. So somehow we want to use ZK snarks to let Alice prove a statement like this. And then third, finally, each voter will take the snark that Alice gave them and uh, they'll just check, verify the snark against the com public commitments and the public winner W to see is W in fact the actual winner corresponding to these commitments. Okay, great. So we know that any property that we want to prove, for example, this one here, can be expressed as a constraint system that we can hand off to the ZK snark construction. Um, so all we have to do is take this property and express it as a constraint system. That will be easy, right? Yes, it is in fact easy. And I've already done it for us. And here it is. This is it. This is a constraint system. All Alice has to do is prove that she knows a satisfying assignment to this constraint system. X12 times X12 equals X12. X14 times X14 equals X14. X15 times X15 equals X15. X16 times X16 equals X16. X15 plus 2X16 plus 4X17 plus 8X18 plus 16X19 plus 32X20 plus 64X21 plus 1024X25 plus 2048, oh I skipped, sorry, plus 16X19 plus 32X20 plus 64X21 plus 128X22 plus 256X23 plus 512X24 plus 1024X25 plus 2048X26 plus 4096x27, um, plus 8192x28, plus 16384x29, uh, plus 32768x50. Uh, there are some other terms that I didn't really bother to write down. Equals x13, um, x269 equals x14, uh, and, and so on. And all Alice needs to do is prove that she knows the satisfying assignment um, to this constraint system here, and then everyone will be convinced that, uh, in fact, she ran the election correctly. So that's great. We're, we're done. We can end, end the video here and uh, I'll go home for the evening. Well, not really though, right? We're not really done, are we? Because there's a problem. That constraint system I wrote was actually gibberish. And moreover, any constraint system that I wrote down probably wasn't going to convince you. Why? Because there's no connection whatsoever between the high-level property that we wanted to prove about elections and the constraint system. Any constraint system that I showed you would be very hard to, to convince yourself that it had anything to do with any kind of high-level property about elections. This is a very similar problem that we have in general in computing, which is if I just send you a compiled binary, it's very much like a constraint system, you have no way of knowing what that compiled binary actually does. Maybe it computes the winner to an election, maybe it encrypts all of your files and uh, asks you to send some Bitcoin to some address, uh, and the, to decrypt them, you don't know. And what's the solution to this problem of there being no connection between a constraint system and the high-level property that we want to prove? Well, we write a compiler from a high-level language. So instead of just sending someone a, a compiled binary, you send them a program in a high-level language like um, OCaml or uh, Haskell um, or uh, I, I think those are the main ones. Um, and then they can compile it themselves uh, and just read the, the high-level program and see that it, that's doing what they expect it to do. We're going to write a compiler which will translate from a high-level description of our property into the sort of low-level assembly code of a constraint system. And furthermore, that compiler is going to be able to translate the data that we want to prove our high-level property about into a satisfying assignment for our constraint system. Great. So we're here to talk about Snarky which is our OCaml DSL, or domain-specific language, for uh, writing high-level properties. And then Snarky will go and compile that into a constraint system for you, and then pass it off to use in ZK Snark constructions. Let's talk a little bit about what programming in Snarky is like. Basically, programming in Snarky is like programming in OCaml, except you have two new primitives. What are these two primitives? The first is that your computation can make requests. This is basically the idea that your computation can pause, kind of stick its hand out, and uh, ask the world to fill in a value for it. The other primitive that your computations have access to is they can make assertions. So they can assert, basically, that some, something holds of some data in your program. Or they can assert, for example, you know, this thing is equal to that thing. 
OK, so we have these two primitives, request and assert. And the idea is you'll have some program that makes requests and makes assertions. And then you'll be able to sort of run that program through the compiler to produce a proof, a snark, which says, I know values to answer all the requests with so that every assertion that the computation makes is true. OK? So uh, now let's go and see an example of snarky in action. Um, first, we'll, we'll kind of run through some pseudocode in a high-level language, uh, which uh, has, is roughly the same as snarky, um, but you know, with a little of the specific syntax uh, cleaned away. Um, so it'll be easier to see what's going on. So uh, we're going to define a, a function winner. Uh, and the idea is winner is going to take the vote commitments as input, and it's going to return the winner of the election. And in the process of computing, it's going to make some requests, and it's going to make some assertions. And so at the end, uh, we're going to be able to take this, this function winner uh, and produce a proof. You know, for a given set of commitments, we're going to be able to produce a proof which says, if I run winner, then I know values to answer all the requests with so that all the assertions the winner makes are true. And this is going to correspond to that property that we wanted to prove of our election, which is I know a bunch of openings to all the commitments. I know a bunch of votes corresponding to the commitments so that the majority of all those votes is, uh, in fact, the claimed winner. So let's go through this program line by line and kind of see how that's going to play out. So the first thing that we do is we compute the set of votes corresponding to the commitments. So the way we do this is we go over the list of commitments that we have. We map over it. For each commitment, we're going to request an opening to that commitment. So we're going to request a nonce and a vote corresponding to that commitment. Then we're going to assert for each commitment that, in fact, this is really an opening. In other words, that the hash of this nonce and vote is equal to that commitment. And then we're going to return that vote. So now, after this finishes, uh, assuming that uh, someone knows values to answer the requests with so that these assertions pass, we're going to have a list of votes corresponding to the, the input commitments. OK, then what we're going to do is we're going to compute a number pepperoni count. And pepperoni count is just going to be the count of how many votes there are which are equal to pepperoni. Then uh, we'll compute a Boolean, pepperoni wins. Pepperoni wins is simply going to be, uh, is pepperoni count greater than half the commitments? Is it greater than the length of the commitments over two? Uh, and then finally, we'll return the winner. And how we're going to compute the winner? Well, we just say, if pepperoni wins, then pepperoni, otherwise mushroom. Uh, so this selection is biased toward mushroom. Um, I'm a vegetarian, so uh, you know, for all the vegetarians out there, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is for us. All right, so now that we have this pseudocode program, before we look at what it actually looks like in Snarky, uh, let's think about if running this will actually prove the thing that we want to prove. So what did we say? We said we're going to be able to prove I know values to answer all the requests with so that all of the assertions in the computation pass. So what are the requests? Well, the requests are the requests to open commitments. And the assertions say, in fact, the opening to the commitment that I was given is actually an opening to the commitment. So in other words, if we can prove I know values to answer all the requests with so that all the assertions pass, what, what's gonna, what we're going to be proving is I know valid openings to all the commitments in the list commitments. Then the computation will proceed. It will count all the votes. It will count the majority. This will be certified by the snark. Um, and you know, if the majority is pepperoni, then it will return pepperoni, otherwise mushroom. So in fact, the property that we're proving is the property that we want to prove, namely that uh, I know openings to all the commitments so that the majority vote is whatever I claimed it was. OK, so now that we understand what it is that we're actually proving in this program, um, let's see how the actual code in Snarky matches up against the pseudocode. Um, so here it is. Here's the code. Um, and we can see it's, it's actually very similar. First, uh, we map over all the commitments. For each commitment, we request uh, that the commitment be opened. Then we take that, the opening to the commitment, we hash it, and then we assert that it's equal to the commitment itself. And then we return the vote. So, so far, pretty much the same. We compute the list of votes by requesting someone, someone open all the commitments. Um, then, just as before, we'll compute a number pepperoni count, which will be the count of the number of votes which are equal to pepperoni. Then we basically say, as just as before, we have a Boolean, a computer Boolean, pepperoni wins, which is just basically, is pepperoni count bigger than half the commitments? 
Uh, and then just as before, we say, what is this function going to return? It's going to return if pepperoni wins, then pepperoni, otherwise mushroom. So uh, as we can see, this matches up pretty much one to one against the pseudocode. You know, there's a bit of noise caused by uh, the OCaml monad syntax, but um, pretty good. OK, cool. So you know, we have this computation. Uh, it makes all these requests. It makes these assertions. But you know, somehow matching to this request, there needs to be some way of answering the request. And uh, the, you know, there's a strong analogy between uh, the idea of a computation pausing and making a request and a computation throwing an exception. They're both kind of saying, oh, I don't know what to do here. Please, someone out there help me. And who is going to help you? Well, it's going to be a handler. Right? In the case of exceptions, you have these uh, exception handlers that catch the exception and respond and do something. It's very similar in Snarky. Um, you have request handlers. Um, and a request handler is basically going to say, for each kind of request, how do I respond? What kind of data do I fill in that request with? It's like this hand is reaching out. Someone's going someone's to drop some data right in that hand. OK, so let's take a look at what that looks like in the library, in the DSL. Basically, uh, it's quite similar to writing a handler for an exception. You basically say, handle this computation with this handler. If someone makes a request, uh, pattern match on that request, and you see, OK, if it's an open ballot request, um, then I'm going to respond with uh, the ith ballot. So if someone requests ballot i, I'm going to respond with the ith ballot, where ballots is some array of ballots that I have access to uh, as the government. OK, cool. So uh, that was a little taste of what it's like programming in Snarky for verifiable computation. Um, all of the code is available on GitHub at github.com slash o1, that's letter o, o1-labs slash snarky. Uh, our website, o1labs, is at o1labs.org. And you can follow us on Twitter at o1 underscore labs.